Good afternoon, Scott Rutherford, Teeth Three Live. Welcome to today's recap. It's I think 2:40. I'm doing this a little early because a lot of people are leaving for the Jewish holidays. If you do celebrate it, have a great seder. Um, if not, uh, you know, good luck with the rest of your day and have a nice uh, hump day and Wednesday night. Anyway, with that said, we came in today. Really, with not much conviction. Uh, we're in this lower pivot. Would we break to the upside? Would we break to the downside? Futures were lower to start the day. You know, some some news out there in various spots and. You know, P.S., the market, you know, pretty much had some early morning strength and it's been building all day into um, the beige book. Um, the market wasn't able to sell off there, but again, there's still a, a, an hour to go. So we have like conflicting patterns here where we're still, you know, I wouldn't say the bulls are out of the woods, you know, but I would say, you know, they're looking a little bit better today. Um, you, you look at the chart of the SPX, you will see. You know, here is that, um, inter, you know, the, the, the November trend line that's been intact that we were hugging into today. You know, this was after breaking down from this head and shoulders top. So we talked about, you know, some people taking risk off uh, a little bit closer, you know, here at that 16.98 and then maybe even getting short with this pattern. And then you had a, a pretty decent move to the downside. Probably, what was this? Um, uh, almost 5%, which has been the, the normal downside type move we've seen, you know, for most of 2013. If you look at all these little down moves, this one might have been 3%, this one might have been 4%, this one was probably closer to 5%. You know, so, you know, with that said, spot to cover your shorts because who knows if this is going to be a different down move with Syria, with the taper talk, with everything out there, perhaps it could have been. So if you came in today flat, which I did actually, you know, you were able to you know, catch a few trades and maybe stick with some. So, you know, we also, if you take a look at um, this pattern here, we talked about like this descending channel here. And here it is. Okay, you have, you have like a big macro channel that, it, you know, it's at hit the top end, this is at the bottom end, but then this intermediate one, you know, it's just poking its head above yesterday's high into what's been pretty significant. I would say if, if the bulls closed the S&P above, you know, 1650, you know, it gets it more back to, to neutral-ish versus yesterday it felt like neutral to negative. You know, um, I do think ultimately, you know, for them to put some pressure on the bears, they really have to close it above this spot, you know, to, yeah, because you have a high, lower high, lower high, lower high. So you want to break that trend, you know, especially in a time when everyone's getting so bearish for September, and maybe that would uh, be positive, okay? This morning, you know, I actually was short the spiders and I flipped because if you look at the, you know, the daily chart, which we, we dissected yesterday, just, this is what, you know, this is what I saw yesterday, okay? Um, this was, you know, this was the move lower, okay? Remember we talked, we tried to be long yesterday and it failed, stopped out. Here was your, your quick move, you know, into, the, into yesterday afternoon, and then it gapped up, and I'm, you, you know, you, you never really know where it's gonna go, but once it broke above this pattern, I was like, yeah, you know what, we could probably at least retest here. So, you know, talked about, I think, 164.90 to 165, an easy spot for a tactical long. And then if you trailed some, you really didn't have much of a reason to get out of what you were trailing. You know, I have a, a little spiders left on. I'm sorry, in the Twitter sphere, I wasn't able to say long spiders, but things happened a little fast. And I was a little busy today. And you know, I basically, you know, been long the spiders from right around here. You could go to, you know, SPY, you'll see it, you know, right there. Okay, this was... Um, it, it tried to quickly break this little spot on the open, couldn't, so it was a nice long. And from here, still holding up pretty well. Um, you know, it, it's now channeling up here, so I would say short-term guys, if you're in it, stay in it. If it started to break below, um, you know, 165.55-ish, perhaps you, you get out of the way if that's what you want to do. If it's, you know, closes above it, I'll probably, you know, keep my spiders in some of the longs. You look real quickly at the banks. We went over in the morning call. Um, this, you know, had a nice breakout early on, okay, it was the first to go, and, you know, ran out a little bit of gas here, but we'll see what happens into the close, if it could, you know, break back above and continue to go. You go to the daily chart, you had, um, you know, it still hasn't broken, this descending channel hasn't reclaimed this, this uh, broken intermediate line, but it's looking a little bit better. Um, I would have liked to have seen them participate better in the afternoon, something like, Goldman with this descending channel broke to the upside here. It's still in this one. You know, this morning was a decent trade. Hasn't been able to power through. We'll see what happens there. You know, Bank of America, just to show another one, you know, still in this area, you know, not powering ahead, but still looks pretty good con compared to some other things. You know, we went over, you know, times to add like here, like here, you know, for new highs. And now it's building another one of these 
areas where above 1450 or I would say even really above 1470, you know, it should see uh, new 2013 highs looking better. Um, and then, you know, we talk about different types of strategies. So, you know, for about, I would say maybe three weeks ever since earnings, Google's been weaker. Amazon's been weaker. And we talk about a tactical strategy, um, what I call a day one. So if you come back to me, um, you say sometimes when you have something out of play and it's grinding lower, you wait for that day one potent day, which then tells you, you know what, put it back on your, your game plan, maybe your go-to list, and, and see if there's commitment to it. So with Google and Amazon, they both had nice days yesterday for the first time in a while. They opened up lower, so that was something to look for for negative to positive. Not only did they go negative to positive, they gave you two trades, one from negative to positive and then through the prior day's high. You look at Amazon, look at this potent move you know, yesterday. Okay, first of all, you know, this is where it failed okay, after earnings. Um, let me just make it a little closer. So you know, we've been dribbling, dribbling, dribbling. And you know kind of sprung has been trying to take some pain here. And you know, I think he stayed with it with his options. Good job. But yesterday, finally, you had like a wide range bar that kind of stuck above a prior pivot. So that to me said, okay, put this back on the radar. So when it opened a little lower today, some guys in the desk were like, you know what, this could go positive for cash flow. And then not only did it go positive, it went above yesterday's high of 291 and now you're back here 295 testing, you know, this broken area. You know, it happened pretty fast. At this point, you know, I, I, we talk about day one, get your feeler, day two you add, you know, maybe day three you sell. You know, I would say right here, if you were in, you know, probably not a bad time to sell, but at least it's acting better, gives us another go-to stock to be involved with. Um, Google also yesterday, not as potent, but did wake up, did clear this lower pivot. Okay, this was your uh, mid-level outside day right there that, you know, closed down. That was when it pretty much went off the radar. This is when you could have used a high level stop when it broke this trend line. And then yesterday, okay, you know, not a blaring day. It tried it here and, and was really choppy. But then finally, um, yesterday with, for some reason, Amazon, they, which have been trading together, it woke up. Today opened lower, so you could have played it to go positive, And then you could also played it to clear yesterday's high. And here you are. So it's something to do tactically if you were looking for a way back into Google. Now we'll see if it builds. Apple, a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, you know, this was uh, the, 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 the chart we went over this morning. Um, here was, the, you know, the, the earnings gap. It's been acting well since. Here is uh, the 200-day moving average, that extra trade. And then, you know, it, it shook things up a little bit, started acting a little weaker, you know, when it broke this little flag-type pattern. But maybe that meant it needed more time if you want to make a, a bigger range. But, you know, it just unfortunate when it has a huge gap up, holds it all day and then does nothing, okay? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in a little bit of Apple and I know, you know, in the, in, in the, in the scheme of things, it still looks fine. The, I would say the September 11th uh, imitation for China was something unexpected, which helped it. A lot of people probably went out short because it didn't look great yesterday. You know, you go to, again, the five minute chart. Here is uh, a big gap. And I guess you could say, you know, it's still up and just has, you know, just didn't reward you unless you were in it overnight. You know, even if you've been trying to work into a position all day long here, still not the easiest of trades. So I would say, you know, in the last hour, if it were finally to start getting above, um, you know, this 500-ish, perhaps it gets a, a little bit of momentum. For me, I have to leave a little early. I'll probably put my stop in around 497. And if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. If I, if I keep it, fine. And then maybe I'll call and see where it is near the close. But anyway, you know, here's your tight range in Apple. Um, when the market made new highs in the day, it was a little disappointing that it didn't go with it. But... Again, in, I guess in, in perspective, it's still holding the gap and, and it's okay. Tesla's just um, hanging around where um, you know, it looked a little weaker and, uh, you know, and then it kind of just reclaimed itself and went below for a second below the prior day low and then popped back up, still held the eight day, still looks really good. Facebook also taking the day off. You know, everyone's saying, what's wrong with Facebook? What's wrong with Facebook? Look what Facebook is. Just an inside range near the highs, not enough juice today. Maybe, be, you know, with LinkedIn doing a spot on secondary, something Facebook might do something like that. So some selling came in, but ultimately really nice stock this whole way up. Um, LinkedIn did do that spot secondary, kind of bagged some traders. Um, but it is what it is. I think with, with time, it's just going to absorb it. Didn't fall apart. It's still hugging the eight day, so it's hanging in there. Netflix. Finally stretching its legs, trying to make new highs. We talked about the road to, to potentially 300. Well, now it's above this little area and looking pretty strong. If it closes above this pivot, you know, tomorrow you, you probably get another trade to the upside or you might want to hold a little bit. You know, these were the last few inflection points right here and right here. 
And then, you know, some guys unfortunately got a little bagged in gold. Um, you know, you look at this trend here, and, uh, you know, it, it looked like, remember, like it's a better sell than a buy here. Some people probably did okay with that. But then yesterday, people were saying, I'm going to buy this dip in gold. It's been in a strong trend. It's holding in the eight day. Today, it was just, you know, pretty potent down move and just shows the randomness of this. So I'm, I'm going to stay away from this for a little bit. Um, until it, you know, it shows me something different. It was a lot more clear cut here with the red dog reversal, and even a lot more clear cut here when it broke. You know this downtrend that's been forming. Now it's kind of in between support and resistance, and not that compelling. Some guys caught this little guy, the Google Glass trade. Look at that. You know, for a little one, got to give Peter a shout out. You know, looking real good there. Um, BlackBerry. There's some. You know, talk about, you know, people taking a look at it, considering what went on, I guess, with Microsoft and Nortel. Um, I don't know about it. I, I actually bought October 11 calls just to be in it, just to see if it, something happens, I'll be in it. If I, you know, really liked it, I would have bought the stock, but instead I'll just buy the call, so this way I'll forget about it for three weeks. If someone does come in and try and bid for it, I think that's a good way to play, you know, BlackBerry. And uh, the casinos that we talked about this morning, Still holding up pretty well. Bank of America trying to make new 2013 highs. LVS, a little bit extended, but still, <laughs> look at that on the highs of the day. What a nice move in this on its way to 60. So, a you know, lot to do. And if you, if you didn't come in today in portfolio approach, you could have built into a few things. I think we close around here, you know, even a little lower, and your things are okay. Maybe you, you take some of your favorite longs with a hedge and see if things build. Um, you know, tomorrow you have, uh, you have jobless claims and then we have the jobs report Friday, but we have some time between now and then. Um, and uh, really, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, here's, that, here's that chart once again. At this point, a little bit out of the danger zone. You know, this was the danger zone for it to break to the downside. Now it's coming into some resistance. I still think it could even have a little bit more room before the bears really need to make a stand for a potential, you know, right shoulder, which is what everyone's talking about. But we'll see. You know, at this point, I think some things are acting well. Some things are tactically are giving you cash flow and a bit more. And I think there's enough going on there then to make some big time predictions. So with that said, it's probably about 10 to 3. Uh, I'm probably not going to be on the desk into the close. So I'm going to leave with the positions on my virtual trade floor. If some of them leaves, that means we, we, follow, we sold off into the close and I got stopped out. If we close okay, I'll be taking what I have on now. And I'll see what, what else I want to do into you know, the end of the day. Scott Rella, T3 Live, The Recap. Have a great holiday tonight if you're celebrating, and if not, just uh, enjoy your Wednesday evening. It's beautiful here on, on the East Coast.